Hello everyone, namaste. Okay, so uh, welcome. Thank you for watching. So, uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, so this is actually a uh, Yoga Kirtan Hawaii program that we're uh, broadcasting on Facebook Live. And we're also simultaneously uh, streaming it on Congregational Kirtan, which is a private Facebook group. So this is a bit of a, bit of a new experiment, so that's why I've been kind of looking at things and trying to check things. So, um, so anyway, my name is Mahabhava Das, and my wife, <coughs> uh, Radhi Chandas, he was assisted us there with leading the Kirtan. And um, so tonight I'm going to be seeing as it's Christmas, uh, very appropriately, or Christmas Eve anyway, I'm going to um, give a yoga wisdom class that's entitled uh, The Best Christmas Gift, Receiving the Gift of Love. And so be before I speak, uh, first I'd like to offer my respects to my spiritual teacher, Jigar Guru Siddhisarupananda Paramahansa, uh, who's very kindly uh, introduced me to uh, these ancient yoga wisdom teachings and has helped me to understand the real meaning of Christmas and the real purpose of uh, Lord Jesus Christ's appearance in this, in this world. And uh, I'd also, of course, offer, like to offer my respects to Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the pure lover of God, of Krishna. And I'd like to offer my respects to everyone who is watching. Uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. Um, <coughs> so, of course, it's Christmas time. And at uh, Christmas time, uh, some people give gifts. <laughs> and in these these gifts are like an expression of uh, love or appreciation that we're giving to someone that's uh, dear to us or who we feel some connection with. Uh, of course, sometimes they're actually given out a sense of obligation, like, oh, oh I've, I've got to give uh, this person a gift because what if they give me a gift and I don't give them a gift, then I'm going to feel really bad about that and uh, that might upset them, you know, so there can be a feeling of uh, obligation or worry. So therefore, you know, we, we get something, something they don't even need, you know, or maybe they need it, but anyway, we go and get something and wrap it in some, uh, in a, in some gift paper or we put it in a, a nice bag or something like that. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, and we give it to the other person. So. And we also receive something from people. So, <clears throat> interestingly, uh, this something, of course, we say something is like one word, but it is some thing, right? Some material thing. So we get, so the, the question is, will some thing, some material thing that someone gives us, will that actually make us happy, right? Or, or if they if you're getting a gift and you're going to give it to someone else, you know, you have to wonder, will this gift of something that I'm going to give someone, will that actually make them happy? And so my uh, spiritual teacher, Yagat Guru, he gave a very nice lecture uh, many years ago uh, entitled Christmas, Gift Wrapped Emptiness. And, you know, he, he just, in this uh, lecture, which actually I was at, and then it got converted into a newspaper article in a newspaper called Haribol New Zealand, and then it got turned into a little booklet uh, called uh, you know, Christmas Gift Wrapped Emptiness. So <clears throat> anyway, he, he described in this uh, lecture, uh, my spiritual teacher described the experience that many of us has have, uh, particularly when we're children, around Christmas time and the, the receiving of gifts, because as a, as a child, you're kind of intently focused upon what am I going to receive, you know, what what present am I going to get, you know, and we, we can get so excited, I remember when I was a kid, I was so excited about <coughs> Christmas and the gifts I was going to get, you know, and so like for uh, 
you know, at least a month beforehand. I guess in America here it's like this Thanksgiving, and so then once Thanksgiving is over, it's all about Christmas. Uh, where I grew up in Australia, uh, there is no Thanksgiving, and uh, Thanksgiving being a particularly American holiday, also celebrated in Canada, I think. But anyway, down there it's just all about Christmas, right? <laughs> It's not broken up with Halloween and then Thanksgiving and then Christmas. No, it's just all about Christmas. Okay, so thinking about the gifts we want, you know, I want this for Christmas. And we, you know, we tell our parents, I remember I used to tell my mother, you know, what I wanted for Christmas. And then sometimes kids even write to Santa Claus to tell him what they want. And of course, writing to the Santa Claus, in fact, even this, <laughs> like the, you can actually, in America, you can actually, write a letter to Santa Claus and there's a, there's a whole post office department that, or section that deals with all these letters to Santa Claus. But um, anyway, of course, naturally writing that there is no Santa Claus and so writing to Santa Claus is just some like ridiculous uh, thing that uh, has been invented somehow or other. I don't even know where it's come from. It's kind of like, but anyway, it's become like this big thing about Santa Claus. But anyway, we write to him and we tell this fictional person what we want. And, you know, even if we're, um, you know, really desperate, and we really want to get a gift, we might even pray to God, oh God, please let me receive the, the new bike that I really want. You know, or the, you know, the, the new computer game or the, you know, the new doll or whatever it might be that we want. Right? We really want this particular, this particular gift. And then on Christmas Eve, like today, um, here in America, uh, we get, you know, really excited about what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm going to receive all these wonderful gifts, and uh, you know, and there, and uh, you know, there'd be a Christmas tree, and um, you know, we're waiting to see gifts turn up underneath the gift Christmas tree. Maybe there's some gifts there already that maybe some relatives or friends have dropped off or something. And uh, so anyway, it's really hard to go to bed on Christmas Eve because we're just like so excited thinking about tomorrow and the gifts I'm going to receive. And it's really hard to go to sleep. And then I, you know, wake up early in the morning and, you know, wondering is it, is it early, is it... Um, you know, can we get up now and, and do the Christmas pre present thing, right? Can we go out to the Christmas tree and, and open the Christmas presents, you know? So we kind of, me and my brothers, you know, we'd get up and we'd go out and look at the Christmas tree and yeah, there's, there's presents under there. Somehow we're thinking, did Santa Claus deliver these or did they come from my parents? It's never quite clear how this whole thing works. <laughs> I have the connection between the parents and Santa Claus and but anyway, we didn't really think about that too much, um, especially as you get a bit older and you find out, well, there is no Santa Claus, just some ridiculous myth that people have come up with as, you know, who even knows why they've done it. <laughs> anyway, um, you go out there and there's, you can see all the presents are under the tree, but you know, you can't open the presents until your parents come out, you know, so your parents have got to, you know, you sort of go into the, into the their room and see whether they're gonna, you know, we used to go there and knock on the door, you know, and then, you know, wonder, well, are my, are my parents gonna get up now? Uh, can, can they come out and watch us open all the Christmas presents? And, uh, you know, finally, finally then, you know, it's, it's late enough, it's like maybe 5 a.m. in the morning, whereas normally you would never get up until 6 or 7. But anyway, 5 a.m. in the morning, the parents come out, they're in their pajamas, we're all in our pajamas and it's like there's this big mood of excitement. We're going to open the presents, you know, and with so much believing that, you know, these presents, these material goodies wrapped up in uh, Christmas paper and with um, Christmas bows and decorations on them and so on, that when I open these and I get the stuff that's inside these, these um, packages, that I'm just going to be so happy that I'm going to experience so much happiness. It's just going to be wonderful. <laughs> There's this kind of 
the feeling that we have, or feeling I used to have anyway. So then, um, you know, so then we start opening it, you know, and we go for the biggest thing, or the, the thing that we think is the thing that I really wanted, that I wrote to Santa Claus about, or I told my mother that I really wanted, or that I even prayed to God about, oh God, please let me make sure I receive this particular present. You know, so then we, we open it, you know, we tear the, tear the Christmas paper off, and uh, open it up and look at it and here it is and ah oh, wow that's wonderful thank you so much mom thank you dad you know this is, this is really good you know and we sort of look at it and then it's like okay all right well i've looked at that one all right what's next okay so we put that one down and then we go to the next present open that one up and it's like oh thank you so much you know it's just what i wanted and then, you know, you know, we don't get that many presents, you know, so maybe there's five or six and you kind of go from one to the next and you open them all up and then it's kind of like, okay, well, is there anything more? <laughs> is, is, that all the, is that all the presents I'm getting? You know, so they say, you know, we look at each one for maybe 30 seconds and um, you know, and after I've opened them all up, and then, you know, after the whole sort of ritual of the opening presents is, is finished, then it's kind of like, then there's a period of like playing with them, right? They're toys, right? Kids want toys, basically. Maybe some books. But anyway, you get your toys, and then you've sort of opened them all up, and then you kind of start playing with them. And then after a bit, it's kind of like, okay, well, I've played with that enough now. <laughs> so. So then, then I begin to feel a little bit like let down, you know. I, I thought these things <clears throat> would make me happy. I've been so looking forward to getting these things. I've been so excited about that I'm, I'm going to get these things. And now I've, now I've got the things. And maybe I got the things I wanted. Or maybe actually I didn't get the things I, I wanted. You know, maybe maybe my parents couldn't afford it. You know, or, or maybe they thought, well, look, if we get if we get Mark this particular thing, but we don't get something similar for my brothers, you know, then you know it's going to create conflict in the family. There's going to be some jealousy and enviousness, <laughs> and so so you got to be careful. It's got to all be like evened out. You know, otherwise this gift-giving ritual can lead to major problems. And um, so anyway, so maybe I didn't get what I want, so I'm bummed about that. Or maybe I got everything that I wanted. But now I'm like just feeling, you know, I'm still not totally happy and satisfied. In fact, I remember like, you know, on Christmas Day, I'd, you know, I'd get all my stuff. And, uh, you know, after you've opened them all and kind of been through the whole thing, then you start thinking about, well, what I want for my birthday. <laughs> What's the next thing I want that's to try and satisfy myself, to try and make me happy. And, and um, you know, so we go from one thing to the other. In fact, this whole Christmas experience, this whole Christmas time, you know, it heightens the, the three forms of anxiety, right? There's three, three types of anxiety in this uh, material dimension. You know, the anxiety of, will I get what I want? Right? And Christmas is like, the kids is like this whole period of, will I get what I want? Will I get what I want? You know, and then the second type of anxiety is, well, <laughs> you might not get what you want. So then that's, that's very distressing. Okay, but, but then if you actually got it, then, the next anxiety is, will I lose it? You know, particularly with, say you get some crappy toy, it's like, will it break? <laughs> you know, so you get an anxiety, will it break? Will someone steal it? Will someone take it? Maybe my older brother will grab it and play with it and uh, not let me play with it. And that'll be a big bummer. You know, so it can be an anxiety about that. And then the third kind of anxiety is, well, now I've lost it. You know, it did break, or it's lost, or um, you know. So there's there's these three 
pre-fall anxieties. And at Christmas time, these three types of anxiety really become more prominent. So, that in, in fact, at you know, Christmas time, <clears throat> many people feel very depressed. Uh, Christmas time can be a depressing time. You know, it's, it's supposed to be a time of, of joy and happiness and feelings of goodwill towards others. Um, but, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people may feel at Christmas time, you know, they can feel lacking in comparison to others. You know, they, they might feel, oh, this, you know, the, the other family or the next door neighbors or the people I see on television or, or whatever. Uh, or these days, what you see on social media, you see other people uh, on social media. Um, sorry, I forgot to adjust the uh, phone. Sorry about that. I forgot to adjust the camera angle on the. Um, <coughs> For the people watching on Yoga Kirtan Hawaii. So anyway, so we, we um, you know, Christmas time, you know, and, or basically at any time, there's this whole new sensation where people are uh, seeing other people's social media posts. And in their social media posts, they look so happy. Right? And, uh, and actually, I'm, I'm feeling kind of miserable, so I'm looking at my... I, I'm feeling dissatisfied that I'm, you know, that these my friends or Facebook friends, people who I don't even know, but somehow I friended them on Facebook. You know, they're looking so happy. They're making these different posts and they're, you know, engaged in such a appear to be engaged in such a wonderful activity, and they're looking all happy and smiling. And I'm their Facebook posts or their Instagrams uh, are better than mine. You know, and in comparison to them, I feel not very, very worthy. And uh, you know, there's a problem these days with young people, particularly young girls, where they, you know, start actually cutting themselves and injuring their bodies out of like because they just feel so uh, bad, unworthy. Or maybe they start getting eating disorders. You know, the bulimia or whatever the other one's called. Um, you know, where they try and look really thin, you know, where they eat and then go and make themselves throw up. So anyway, there's this, this feeling of uh, not being uh, compared to others, that my situation is, is not very good and I, and I feel very uh, unworthy and unhappy and depressed as a result. And this, this can particularly happen a lot at Christmas time because we're thinking or seeing that other people are very happy. Uh, you know, they have big families or whatever, and they're all having a happy, wonderful time. And then maybe I'm just on my own, and I don't have a family or much of a family, and I'm feeling very lonely. And or I had this expectation that Christmas would be so satisfying, uh, but actually, when I got my presents that I didn't experience the happiness that I thought I would. Uh, I didn't experience joy and happiness. I actually experienced dissatisfaction and emptiness. And so I can become very depressed. And this can lead to me, um, you know, can just lead to, uh, you know, turning to drugs or alcohol, you know, or, or you know, a minute that you can have the big, Christmas dinner, all the family gets together, and maybe they end up in a big argument. <laughs> it happens a lot at uh, Christmas time, where, where it just evolves into fighting and arguments. And in fact, in America, at present, it's like things are so polarized. You've got the people who, you know, think that President Trump is great, and then you've got the people who think he's not great. And it's become like, in, in the past, if you liked or didn't like a particular president, or president, it was like, well, no big deal. But like at this time, it's become like this huge divisive issue, and um, 
you know, even within families, husbands and wives can have a come support one or the other and it can become like this big, big uh, conflict. So anyway, you can end up in a big, big argument and uh, maybe you can just be feeling really depressed and this can lead to, you know, people turning to drugs and alcohol to just try and drown out their sorrows. Then these sorrows can become emphasized at Christmas when we get these um, gifts that just don't satisfy us. So anyway, so I'm sure everyone, you know, listening and watching has, has experienced these uh, things I'm just discussing or talking about here. We've experienced it in our life to one degree or another. You know, the, the sensation that the, the gifts don't act up, the things don't actually satisfy me, or the emptiness that we can experience, uh, the depression that can come at Christmas time. So either we've directly experienced it ourselves or we've seen others experience it. So, you know, as a result, maybe, maybe I might become like a, a Grinch, <laughs> you know, the Christmas Grinch who goes like, oh, bah humbug to Christmas, you know. You don't want to, don't even want to get involved in it because I'm fearful that it's going to lead to depression and a, a bad experience that's going to... Um, be upsetting, a sense of loneliness, you know, so so maybe I just don't want to get involved. You know, and in, in um, you know, in, in today's society, you know, we have a, pre a prevailing climate of uh, non, so-called non-sectarianism, or in America they call it freedom of religion. There's this uh, whole sort of uh, series of legal cases that have even going before the Supreme Court, where it's <clears throat> really about people are wanting freedom from religion. It's not about freedom of religion. They actually want freedom from religion. You know, they don't want to, don't want to be exposed to ideas about God or religion in any form at all. They just want to be in a hedonistic society and be able to enjoy themselves without anyone sort of bringing up things about, well, you know, um, you know, you, this, this is what you're, these activities you're engaging in are, are sinful and they're going to lead to future suffering in a, in a future life. Or, you know, from the uh, kind of very sort of harsh view of Christianity, you know, you'll go to hell forever, eternal damnation, you know, so it's, it's like, well, people don't want to be exposed to that, so they want to be free from religion. They don't want to be exposed to these religious ideas, and they don't want the government or the state or the education system even talking about these things. You know, so, um, you know, so it leads to more or less an atheistic society, and, you, know, you know, where we can't even say Merry Christmas. Right? In, in America today, you can barely say Merry Christmas. Uh, you have to say happy holidays. <laughs> and of course, you know, as, as my spiritual teacher said, there's nothing wrong with saying happy holidays. Like, okay, well, that's nice, you know, wishing people happiness and holidays. And of course, the word holidays comes from holy days. Uh, but of course, no one thinks about that. It's just holidays. And, um, <clears throat> you know, so this, this leads to a a situation, you know, where the, the real reason for Christmas is, is com completely forgotten, right? It's like, you know, when I, when I walk the streets every morning, I go for a, you know, morning walk, um, and, and in, in the neighborhood around here, people put up their, um, you know, their, their Christmas decorations on their houses. You know, they put up like lots of lights. And then more recently these days, uh, over the last few years, there's been like this big switch to like these um, blow up kind of, they're not toys, but they're like blow up figures. Some of them can be quite tall, like 10 feet tall or something. And there's like a, a, a pump 
a little motor that pumps air into it and keeps them inflated. And so all of these things, they're all either Santa Claus or reindeers or Christmas trees or they, you know, they, they um, take some other figure and sort of dress it in a red coat or something or put a Christmas Santa Claus hat on it, you know. But everything is about that. There is nothing <clears throat> that has anything to do with the real reason for Christmas. And, uh, you know, I, I saw a cartoon uh, recently where it says the reason for the season and it had Jesus, but then Jesus was crossed out, you know, crossed out. And then the reason for the season, Jesus was crossed out and Santa. <laughs> so, you know, so it's like they're totally, totally uh, trying to cross Jesus out of the picture altogether, you know, and, and culturally it's become like that. You know, very rarely will you see a nativity scene, you know, the birth of Jesus uh, anywhere. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, but, but actually, of course, Christmas is about the birth of Jesus. You know, <laughs> uh, his appearance in this world, you know, which is a truly most wonderful event. You know, a, a truly joyous occasion. You know, and so the, the, you know, the, the reason for Jesus' appearance was, was to give the gift of love. You know, the, the gift of telling us about and sharing with us the unconditional love that God has for all his children and for Jesus to share with us his uh, the love for God that he has, you know, so, so how contrary is this, the real reason for Christmas, you know, the appearance of Lord Jesus Christ and his um, teaching us about the goal of life, that the real goal of life is to love God with all your heart and all your being, and that this second is like unto it, to love others as much as you love yourself. So, in other words, the whole reason for Jesus' appearance is to give us this actual gift of eternal life, of e eternal love, of appreciating love for God and experiencing love for God and love for others. And that somehow this whole thing has become turned around and perverted so that at Christmas time now, that Jesus is like completely forgotten in, in popular culture, you know, in the shopping centers and in the streets. Uh, you know, it's basically virtually nothing to do with Jesus. And it comes down to like buying things to give to other people uh, in an attempt to make them happy and, and, and rich merchants. So I mean, it's like it's a whole thing developed by uh, retail merchants. Right. over the last couple of centuries, this whole idea of gift giving and, you know, it's great for business, right? It's the busiest time of the year for uh, those shops. It's the whole, like, purpose of the whole Christmas, um, you know, it's to make money for people. <laughs> so, so how much that's been diverted from, you know, the real reason to celebrate uh, Christmas, the appearance of Lord Jesus. So, you know, Jesus, you know, is appearing, giving us, teaching us how to love, how to love God, and sharing his love for God with us. You know, so there's, there's actually uh, studies that show the power of love. Like if you have just, <clears throat> you know, if you have a, a person, a person gets a, a pet, and relates to that pet, takes care of it, and the pet may be a nice dog or whatever, uh, reciprocates and, sh and shows affection. You know, this has a big impact on a person, making them uh, measurably more happier than someone who doesn't have a pet or doesn't have someone that they love in their life. 
you know, so uh, just with pets or even married couples. Like when you have your married couples, even if they don't get on that great, they actually live longer than people who are single, uh, generally speaking. And it's, it's just the relating to someone else and showing affection to someone else, having love for someone else and that person loving them, then this has a, uh, you know, a, a measurably beneficial impact on people. And so this is, this is like the, a relationship between two people, right? or two living entities. And uh, so, but what Jesus is giving, he's teaching us love for God. So we're all the, the children, children of God. And, um, you know, so by definition, God or Krishna, Krishna the all-attractive person, Krishna is a name for God. God has many names, but Krishna means the all-attractive person. Um, you know, he is the cause of all causes. Uh, as is stated in uh, Vedic literature, the Brahma Sunita, uh, Sava Karana Karanam. So Sava is all, Karana is cause, and Karana is cause of all causes. So Krishna is the cause of all causes. And in Bhagavad Gita, in chapter 10, text 8, Krishna says, Aham Savasya Prabhavo, Mata Savam Prabhatate. I am the cause of everything. Everything and everyone emanates from me. You know, so Krishna or oh God, is the cause of everything. You know, he's so, I mean, inconceivably powerful and, and big in the sense that he's creating the entire material and spiritual worlds, and we are his uh, parts and parcels. So, uh, and we are spiritual in essence, we're eternal spirit souls, parts and parcels of the Supreme Soul. And so, you know, we can contemplate or imagine that if we can uh, experience uh, happiness and joy out of a loving relationship with someone else in this world, you know, whether it be a child or our parents or our spouse or our pet, you know, that this gives a certain amount of happiness. And this, this happiness, in a sense, is like a, um, a type of yoga or union. The word yoga means to link up or to uh, unite. And it, so it entails, of course, two people or two, two beings and a process for uniting. And so the process of yoga is really about uniting with God, the Supreme Person. And uh, the particular type of yoga that we teach at uh, Yoga Kirtana Wai is uh, what's known as bhakti yoga. So bhakti means love, pure love. And uh, so bhakti yoga is the process of linking up or uniting with the Supreme Person, with God or Krishna, through the process of devotional service or bhakti yoga. So love, the, the, uh, the process of loving devotion, developing our love for, for the Supreme Person, for Krishna, through various different uh, spiritual practices, the practice of kirtan that we engaged in, uh, the practice of hearing about Krishna, hearing about God. And this is very much, of course, what, what Jesus did. He came and taught about God, and taught about that we should be loving God, and how, and how we can elevate ourselves to uh, a platform of love and God. And so we can um, uh, contemplate the reality
Haribol, namaste. Sir, uh, your volume is not working. Sir, your volume is not working. Oh, yeah. It's okay, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. How long was it not working? Yeah, it's not working. Uh, maybe two minutes ago. Ah, okay. All right. Not sure what happened. Anyway. I'm Thank muted. you so much. I must say. Must say. So, um, anyway, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Apologies to all of you watching who weren't able to hear. So, anyway, so um, when I was making was uh, the Sanskrit term for spiritual happiness and bliss is ananda, and it means uh, you know just pure bliss, pure happiness. And this is actually the nature of the soul. It's actually our nature is that in our spiritual we are spiritual in essence, and we are eternal. We are cognizant and we are uh, blissful. And so linking up with God or Krishna through the process of yoga allows us to experience unlimited ananda or bliss, so much more than the uh, loving relationships we may experience in this world. And ultimately, these loving relationships that we have in this world, they're very much based on, you know, I love you provided you love me, you know. Um, if you don't love me, well then I don't love you. You know, well, my love for you is based upon you cooking my dinner or giving me sex or giving me stuff, treating me nicely. If you don't treat me nicely, don't give me what I want, well then I don't love you anymore. You know, so this is known as lust. You know, it's not love. So Jesus is teaching the process of pure love. Pure love for God. So it's the very nature of the soul to want to love and be loved. This is our intrinsic essence. To love and be loved is the quality of the soul, our very nature. So we give our in this process of yoga, you know, we, we give our love to God and we receive God's love or Krishna's love in return. And, you know, this love, God's love for us, as Jesus taught, is unconditional. He loves us all the time. So the, the only question is whether we love God in return, whether we reciprocate. So God's love and mercy is showering upon us all the time. But we can choose uh, whether to receive this love and to reciprocate in love with God, or we can choose not to. And it's like, you know, essentially we're in, uh, it's like being in the dark. We're in the dark, and maybe even we deny God's existence, right? We're an atheist, or we reject uh, God's instructions and laws and um, uh, teachings, we have no interest in them, no, I don't want to live like that, I just want to be hedonistic and enjoy my senses to the fullest, and if I have to think about uh, God's laws, well then, that, you know, it's just a bummer and I don't want to know about it, and I don't want to know about God, and hey, there's no God anyway, right? So we, we can have this attitude, uh, you know, but, which is an attitude of darkness, of denial of just reality. Obviously there's a supreme creator. Uh, so there's the reality of God. And we can choose to be in that darkness, or we can choose to come out of that darkness and come into the light of God's love. And this is the Krishna's love for us. And this is the teachings of Lord Jesus. You know, so this is the real uh, reason for Christmas. And this is the perfect Christmas gift that we can receive is we can receive the teachings of Lord Jesus Christ. We can see the example of Lord Jesus Christ and how he lived uh, for God's pleasure and he loved 
Krishna or God so much. And so we can follow in Lord Jesus' footsteps. So I thought I'd, I would just um, uh, I'm going to read some quotes from my spiritual teacher that sort of summarize what I've been speaking on. Uh, but before I do that, I would just like to encourage everyone, you know, please come into the light of God's love, of love for God that Jesus is giving us, you know, that us, that all the great saints and sages uh, teach and give us, you know, please receive this best gift of love that is being freely given to us by Lord Jesus. You know, so receive it and please share it with others and pass it on. So just some quotes. Um, if I give you the gift of letting you know that God loves you unconditionally, that you can have him as your best friend, and that he will actually give you protection, take good care of you, then that is the greatest gift I can give you. If I can help you become attached to God, then that is actually the only thing I can give which will make you happy. Nobody can be happy with anything other than God. The greatest lover of all of us is Lord Jesus Christ. He is the perfect example of someone who loves all of us. He loves every one of us unconditionally, and He is giving us the greatest gift. He is teaching us that we should love God, and that will make us happy. So Jesus Christ is the perfect example of someone who's giving us nothing material at all, and yet he loves us more than anyone else. If we want to give the greatest gift, we should understand that Jesus is giving the greatest gift. We should follow in his footsteps and also pass on this gift. We should give the greatest gift, love for God to others. This is the real present. So thank you very much for listening, everyone. We'll just, have long? We're just, just five minutes. We're just going to have another <clears throat> short uh, cut down for five minutes. Hare Krishna, 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 Hare
Ribo, Ribo. 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 Ribo.